Hello and welcome to another Programming from A to Z video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I want to talk about the JavaScript string object. <laughs> um, so what is the JavaScript string object? Well, if you've ever written code like this, var s equals hello. Now I have a variable, and it has a string of characters, a sequence of characters in it, H-E-L-L-O. This is a string object. So on the one hand, I can use this string object to put text in a DOM element. I can use it to paint text onto a canvas. I can use it to print text to the console. But what I'm going to be doing in future videos is manipulate string objects. So if I load all the text from a file and I have this big string object with all paragraphs and paragraphs about rainbows and I want to like chop it up and mix it up or analyze it or make poetry out of it, I need to learn how to manipulate string objects in JavaScript. So this is what I want to look at the basics of. And then next week or in the next videos that you might see in the future that might already be there, I'm going to look at something called regular expressions, which is really going to Uh, just like explode the possible things you could do with um, text and uh, JavaScript. But for right now, we're going to live with just the string object itself. And so if you want to learn about all the possible things you can do with string objects, um, the place that you, I, I would say that you can go to is the um, Mozilla document, the Mozilla uh, document, JavaScript documentation. Look under reference global object string. I'll include a link to this page in this video tutorial. And you can see, ah, oh, there's like a nice little tutorial here that kind of runs through a lot of stuff. You can see all of these functions that you can call on strings, like index of and normalize and repeat and slice and strike and blah, blah, blah. So I'm not going to go over all of this with you. I'm going to give you a little bit of a kind of like wade into the waters of manipulating string objects. You can also find my notes on this on um, this particular web page, the A to Z programming website, which uh, I'll also link to this page in this video tutorial. So I made a list over here on the whiteboard of things that I want to look at um, in this video. So I'm going to look at uh, uh, th really just three pieces of functionality that have to do with strings. There's a long list of the Mozilla documentation. There's a lot of other ones that I encourage you to investigate and play with. But three that I find useful to some things that I might do. One is index of. Another is substring. Uh, the length property of strings is something that you need quite often. And then I want to also look at splitting and joining, which are operations that I'm going to be doing continuously throughout many uh, tutorials and examples in this video series. There's a little bit of funny business about this <laughs> that I have to uh, get to and talk about at some point, but I'm not going to right now. OK, so this is my list. Let's start. Let's just start. Like, let's go in reverse order or some sort of strange other order. Let's talk about length. So I have an uh, example set up already uh, right here that you can see. First of all, I could just say s.length right here. I should just be doing all of this in the console, really. If I say s.length, you can see I get a length of five because hello has five characters, H-E-L-L-O. Let's just look at how we would do this in code, right? I have a simple sketch, which all it does right now is it has a text input box. When I hit submit, I create a paragraph element with that text input box. I can go to my code, and one thing I can do is I can say, I'm just going to say var s equals text field dot value. So this is pulling what's in that text field and placing it into a string object. And now I'm going to say uh, create ps.length. So now when I run this code again, you can see that text has 42 characters. So if you want to build a check to see if your text could fit into a tweet application, you can see how if it's greater than 140 characters, you know, spit out this is too long to tweet or whatever. So you can see that's one property we can use. Now, Here's another property, here's another function that's really useful, index of. So let's say I say var s equals hello. Whoops. And I say s index of rainbow. What am I going to get? Negative 1. Index of is a function that searches for some text like rainbow in some other text, s. I'm looking for rainbow in the text hello. Well, rainbow doesn't exist in the text hello. So what do I get? Negative 1. Negative 1 means I can't find that substring in that larger string. So this can be quite useful to you if a user types in some text and you want to figure out, did they type in this word or search for a word in that piece of text? Now, what else? Well, how, what does it work? How does it work if that text is actually there? So let's look at that. So let's actually add this. 
So I'm going to say um, var index equals s dot index of rainbow. And then I'm going to say create p index. So I'm going to run this again. And now I'm going to hit submit. And I got 33. Why did I get 33? Well, I'm going to say rainbow, 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 rainbow. Rainbow, 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 rainbow. OK. And now I'm going to hit submit. And you can see I got 0. So what is it doing? I'm going to say 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, rainbow. I got 5. So what index of is doing is it's saying, hey, this is the index of the substring you're searching for. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, a rainbow starts at index number index 5. So this can be really, this seems sort of like trivial and silly right now, but you might load a massive amount of text in, and you might want to find where something, and this can be good for scraping and parsing. Ah, I want to find stuff that's in between this, so I have to find this, and where's that, and then I want to find something else, and then I'm going to use another function that I'm going to show you, substring, to plot something in between. So you can see, this is what index of does. Um, so Let's look at, um, actually, that's fine right now. I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, one thing I should mention, though, is what about the case where I said rainbow, rainbow, boy, do I love rainbows, right? In this case, I always get 0. How, and, but there's only one instance of, it's always giving me the first rainbow. But look what I can do. What if here I say index of, um, and hold on. Um, Let's put this, one thing I want to do is, sorry, I'm going to put this as the default text in the text box. And then here, I'm in index of, I'm going to do something weird where I'm just going to say comma 10. And I'm going to hit submit. And look, I got 30. Why did I get 30? Let me take out that comma 10. I got 0. So here's, here's something that the index of allows you to do. It allows you to say, search for the first instance of rainbow after a certain index. So by default, it'll start searching from 0. But here I'm saying, just start searching from the 10th character. So here's a difficult programming exercise for you. Write an algorithm that searches using index of for every instance of rainbow. So find the first one, then search for the next one after the first one, then search for the next one after that one. And keep doing that until you get a negative 1. Maybe I'll try to post a solution to that or make that as a coding challenge. But that's something that you could try to do. OK. That's index up. One more function that I want to show you in this particular video that I think would be useful to you is substring. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say var new text equals s dot substring uh, 5 comma 7. And I'm going to run this. If it's submit, oh, uh, index is not defined. Uh, create p, sorry, new text. Run this again. You can see I get OW. Why? Because 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 is the O. I want a substring starting at 5. And where do I want it to end? 6, whoops, <laughs> OW, 6, 7. Oh, it's ending on a space. Bad coincidence there. So let me change this and change this to, um, actually, I'll just change the text. <laughs> so I'm going to take out the spaces. Am I going to get OWR, or am I going to get just OW? Think to yourself, what's it going to be? I still get OW. So this is a little goofy thing with substring, but let's say I have the text H-E-L-L-O, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If I say substring between 1 and 4, I'm including 1 but I'm excluding 4. So I'm just getting L there. So this is how substring works. You might ask yourself, well, that's annoying. That's weird. Why is it done that way? There's actually a pretty good reason, which is, number one, what's the length of this string? 3, substring, 3. What's 4 minus 1? 3. And often something you want to do is get a substring from some point of the text to the end of the text. And in that case, all I need to do is say, Give me a substring, and, and here's something I could do. I could say substring from s dot length divided by 2 all the way until the end, s dot length. So this is now my code, right? Give me a substring between the middle of the string and the end of the string. You can see, do I love rainbow? Do I love rainbows? There is an answer to this question.
I don't have a sound effect or anything, but the answer is, I think you know it's yes. Okay, so uh, <laughs> um, do I love rainbows? Yes. So you can see no matter what I, this is the first half, this is the second half, and I hit submit, and look at that. That's amazing. I got this, somehow those worked out to be the exact number of characters. I don't see how that's possible, but it did. Uh, this is the second half. You can see how that works in getting a substring of the second half. So you can think of a lot of, here's an exercise for you. Um, what if you have something like this? The temperature outside is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Write an algorithm that pulls out the number 72 without knowing that it's going to be the number 72. So no matter what I type here, every time I hit submit, I get 72, 21, 50. How do you search for, and, and by the way, also I could change this to a temperature or, well, the temperature outside is, so it's not a fixed length. How do you search for where is colon space is so that you know where the number starts? And how do you search for where space degrees is so you know where the number ends? And by the way, it should still also work if I type in 101. So that's a programming exercise for you. Create a generic phrase of any length that, uh, and you need to pull out a subset of text of any, of any length out, out, out of that phrase. Um, this is just one scenario. This has to, and by the way, next week when I do a video tutorial about regular expressions, you're going to see a, a totally other magical, powerful Goody power. way of doing it. Okay, so um, this is the end of this uh, video tutorial about strings. There's all sorts of other w things that I've missed. This is just a small taste of it. Try some of those exercises. Try looking at the documentation page. You know, pick a random uh, function uh, like slice or search and see what a lot of these might require regular expressions um, and see what you get. Ah, I forgot something. On my list over here, I want to briefly talk about, briefly before I leave you in this video, I want to talk about splitting and joining. So let's just look at this. This is an incredibly common operation that I need in so many videos. And I could make another video about it, but I'm going to leave it in this one. So let's look at this. because, and, and I'm going to get to more about this next week with regular expressions. So this is just a little bit of a, so I'm going to use, so I'm going to use right now, there are two functions that are part of the P, I'm going to show you two functions that are, three functions really, that are part of the P5JS library. One is split, one is split tokens, and one is join. Now, next week I'm going to show you how to use the native JavaScript split function to use regular expressions, so I'm going to kind of redo this. But in this video, I'm going to look at the P5JS function split, and I'm going to show you why this is so useful. S all, almost all of the text analysis algorithms that I'm going to demonstrate later are based on word counting. And one of the things you need to do with word counting is split a paragraph of text and a multiple paragraphs of text into sentence chunks, into word chunks, that sort of thing. So um, I'm going to do that right, I'm going to show you how to do that with split. And it's actually quite an easy operation. So um, basically, I'm going to, uh, and I'm just going to go to the uh, sketch right here. Um, whoops, there's a, a, a something, whoops, just missing here. So I'm going to leave this. This, this. this gives you half the text. But I'm just going to do something over here in the console, which is var s equals uh, text field dot value. So now I have in the variable s, rainbow, rainbow, boy, do I love rainbows. <laughs> and I'm going to say split s. Just see what I get. So look at that. I say split s on its own. I don't really split it, but I get an array. And I get an array with the entire sentence in there. The whole point of splitting text is to take one chunk of text and split it into an array. So what if I say s and comma space in quotes? You can see now look what I have. I have an array with each word as a separate element. So I'm going to do a few things here. I'm actually going to do that right now in my code. I'm going to say var words equals split s by space, and then I can loop through all of the words and do something with them individually. I can say uh, create p words index i. So now you can see I get a different paragraph element for every word in there. Now let me add a comma in here. 
and I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to hit refresh, and I'm going to add a comma in here. Notice how the first word has a comma. Hmm, so what might I do? In this case, I might go to my code, and I might say, okay, split by space, comma, or comma space. Now look what happens. I'm going to add the comma in there. I'm going to hit submit. Now I just got two things, rainbow and rainbow. Boy, do I love rainbows, because it's split by comma space. And the only time a comma space appears is rainbow, comma space. <laughs> what I want to do is not say split by comma space, split by comma or space. And again, a regular expression is going to be a nice solution to that. But for right now, without it, there's a p5.js function called split tokens. And if instead of using split, use split tokens, it'll actually do that for you. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the comma in there. I'm going to hit submit. And you can see, now it worked. There's ways of retaining the delimiters, not retaining the delimiters. I'm going to show you more stuff about that uh, in a future video. But these are the basic idea. Split and split tokens. And join, by the way, does the absolute inverse. So one thing I can do is I could, say, I could now say words.sort. Uh, I think it'll sort it in an array. I think it'll sort it by the default sorting. And then I could say uh, uh, s equals um, join words, and I think I probably need, might make a new array. So I'm going to say words equals words dot source, sort, and then I can say create ps, and I'm going to comment this out. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking this, turning it into an array, sorting it in alphabetical order, putting it back together, and then displaying it. And you can see, boy, do I love rainbow, rainbow, rainbows. <laughs> and we can see this should be in alphabetical order. Alphabetical be in order should this. So you can see here's a quick algorithm. I've done something here to take a, a sentence, split it up, sort it by alphabetical order, and display it back to the user. I'm sure you could think of something much more creative to do with this paradigm of text input and text output. And in the next video, I'm going to show you, uh, do a coding challenge about how to implement Jackson McClough's diastic. Uh, which I'll explain in the next video as well, um, as text input, text output. OK? Uh, thanks very much. And yes, I apologize for not using Celsius in this video. <laughs> OK, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon in the next one.